Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel, and this is my review for Amsterdam, which is the latest movie from David O. Russell and has an all star cast Christian Bale, John David Washington, Margot Robbie, Anya Taylor Joy, Rami Malek, Zoe Saldana, Michael Shannon, Mike Myers, Taylor Swift, Chris Rock and Robert De Niro. The movie takes place in 1933 and basically follows three friends, played by Christian Bale, John David Washington, and Margot Robbie. They have known each other since World War I. Uh, the first two were soldiers, and Margot Robbie was a nurse. Uh, they eventually reunite after this long period of time uh, to try to solve a murder mystery that, unfortunately, Christian Bale and John David Washington were accused of. I gotta be honest, right off the bat, I am not the biggest fan of David O. Russell. Even the movies that he's made that a lot of people love, I don't really care for. Like, The Fighter, I... There's something about that movie that just doesn't really work for me. Silver Linings Playbook is a little better, but just has a bunch of characters that annoy the hell out of me. American Hustle, I gave it a really positive review when I first saw the movie, but having thought about it years later, it does not hold up at all. It is, it's not awful, but it's just not good. And Joy is, not good either, so I don't like this guy's movies. But with the trailers for this movie right here, Amsterdam, I thought they were amusing. It had a really stacked cast, and it kind of reminded me of something the Coen brothers would make. So I thought, you know what? I'll give this a shot. I haven't liked David O. Russell's previous movies, but hey, why not? And then the reviews started coming out for this movie, and everyone was talking about how terrible it was. Like, I think right now, it has a 33% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I thought to myself, this is why I don't let myself get excited for movies based on trailers. I let myself get excited for Jurassic World Dominion, and we saw how that turned out. But I decided to be fair. I decided to see the movie for myself before I could actually start talking shit about it, because maybe I'll be in the minority with this one. Maybe I'll end up liking it. Huh? Although that clip that's been going around Twitter where Margot Robbie shoots Rami Malek and Anya Taylor Joy in the face and it looks like a high school play didn't really give me a boost of confidence. So I went into it with the best of intentions. And uh, yeah, this is exactly what I get for trying to be enthusiastic about David O. Russell movie. This is not even just bad. It's a special type of bad. A bad that makes you just go... How did this many people get involved? And how is this so half-assed? The cast is stacked. I already gave you a whole list of names. None of them seem to be even trying. There are a few people that are decent. Like I thought Anya Taylor-Joy was pretty good in parts. Christian Bale does the best he can at being kind of an eccentric weirdo. But even then, when you get to the final act of the movie, he just gives up as well. But everyone else is half-assing their performance. Chris Rock is not good. Margot Robbie's not good. Robert De Niro is clearly there just for the paycheck, even though he's worked with David O. Russell in the past. The worst is actually John David Washington. I guess he got off lucky with Black Klansmen and the fact that he's Denzel Washington's son. Um, but he is just dreadful in this movie. However, I'm not going to blame John David Washington for his bad performance because if it was just him and one other actor then yeah I would but since it's the whole cast that is terrible uh, that's more on David O. Russell's hands uh, because he really did a terrible job directing this movie. It's not interesting to look at. It's so uninspired. What he's trying to do is what the Coen brothers seem to do every now and then. Take a kind of serious plot, but make it a little exaggerated with a lot of good actors in it with a dry sense of humor, except David O. Russell has no sense of comedic timing, and he just doesn't know how to do this kind of movie that the Coen brothers so successfully succeed at. And the script is just dog shit. It's not that interesting of a murder mystery. The path that it goes down to, especially in the third act, is just ludicrous. It basically escalates to a bigger conspiracy theory that just made me go, Really? Like, r really? That's where this movie is going? You're going that direction? And I'm gonna spoil something right now. Uh, you can scream spoilers all you want. I don't care. 
This movie uh, did not do well at the box office and is supposedly going to lose 80 to 100 million dollars, so nobody's seen this movie. There's a sequence in the movie where Taylor Swift confronts Christian Bale and John David Washington about the death of her father, and she has news to deliver these two. They're standing in front of a movie theater in New York City, where people are walking in and out, people are walking down the street, it's a packed theater. And then in clear eyesight, somebody pushes Taylor Swift into the street and she gets run over by a car and killed. Which first of all is a hilarious scene, it comes so far out of nowhere. And I don't know if it was meant to be funny, but if it was, then that's the one time where this movie actually succeeds in trying to be funny with a dry sense of humor. But the guy who pushes Taylor Swift into the street suddenly points to our two leads and says, you killed her, you pushed her into the street. I'm like, dude, you're in New York City. You have hundreds of people walking throughout this town. There's nobody in their right minds who could say, yeah, these two did it, not this guy here we clearly saw. And they're also standing in front of a theater. As I mentioned before, there is a ticket booth in front of them, in front of the scene of the crime, with a ticket vendor just watching the whole thing play out. That is just truly unbelievable. Like, that's not even the worst aspect about this movie. Nor is that clip that's been going around Twitter. And the movie is way too long. It goes for about 2 hours and 14 minutes, which doesn't feel long, but when most of the movie just consists of these characters talking about nothing, it feels like it goes on for an eternity. It's so... It's so baffling how bad this movie is. Now, it's not on a level of cats where it's like shockingly bad or it's going to have a cult following. No, this is just really, really terrible from a director who, despite how I feel about him, has made decent stuff. So because of all that, I'm going to say don't waste your money on it. This is turning out to be a really bad year for Oscar movies. I know we're in the middle of October, so anything could happen between now and the end of the year, but between Don't Worry Darling, this, and another movie that I'm going to be reviewing in a couple days, all the Oscar contenders or all the movies that are trying to be up for the Academy Awards are not looking good. Like, this is just really... It'll be interesting to see what the Best Picture nominees will be this year. I mean, again, we'll see what happens throughout the rest of the year, but right now, uh, I'm starting to really believe that Top Gun Maverick might be the biggest contender. I, I truly believe that. Um, that and everything everywhere all at once. So we'll see. We will see, but right now, I don't have my hopes up for this award season. And there you go, that's my review for Amsterdam. I hope you enjoyed it, and now I wanna know what you guys think about the movie. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go check out my Twitch channel, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and take care of yourselves.